And this is a, this is a paper that I will present. Um, a paper uh, together with my co-author, uh, Hendrik Zinkernagel, that I met in Granada was I, when I was having a, a sabbatical uh, over there. And it was actually what happened was that we met each other in the, in the, in the restaurant. Uh, the restaurant of the philosophy department was not very good. Uh, our restaurant was much better. And so he, uh, he joined, he was there, and he was sitting alone. I was sitting alone. I didn't know anybody. So I said, can I join you? And we started speaking. And he said, what do you do? I said, well, I work in a business school. Oh, okay, in a business school. So what do you do? I teach people, uh, you know, like you, uh, executives. Uh, and so what do you teach them about? About strategy, about making money, basically. <laughs> that's basically what we do, right? That's, that's what I always do. How can you make more money? How can you compete harder? You know, how can you win? Uh, that's, the, that's, that's, that's the work I'm doing. And he says, so why do you do that? And he's a philosopher, right? Uh, that's the word that they know best. Uh, why? Why? And so he was asking me more questions and more questions. And at some point, I realized that I really didn't have any answers. And so we, we started a conversation, a conversation that's still going on. Uh, we hope uh, that we are going to be able to, to finish this paper soon and, and, and send it out to a journal to publish. But let me, uh, let me go with you uh, through it and let's see together, you know, if it makes any sense. So... <clears throat> Let me start first with uh, defining the concept of, uh, of purpose, a proposito. Uh, we say a company purpose is the overall goal of a specific company. And, uh, you know, uh, Carlos uh, gave me the book uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that we spe spoke about before. A uh, company purpose represents the why. Uh, uh, like the president uh, of the university said before, uh, uh, para que. Uh, uh, the why of an organization's actions. It's not a means to an end, but it's the end itself. That is the purpose of the uh, organization. And the goal of profit maximization that we have been speaking about a lot and that I use actually in my teaching quite a lot is an example of purpose. But purpose could also be multifaceted with multiple things. And it could also include other things such as financial, social, and environmental objectives. So we introduced the idea of a purpose maker. Now, who is a purpose maker? A purpose maker is any person in the organization, be it an uh, executive, be it a director, any person in the organization that helps determine, helps influence the purpose of the organization. Because the purpose of an organization is not given. A purpose of the organization is formed over time as the uh, organization transforms itself over time. Um, and so why, then we ask ourselves, so why do firms even have a purpose? Because if we have the purpose of profit maximization that is so strong, and that is so strongly believed in society to be uh, the, one, the one single goal, then why would we even think about a purpose beyond profits? And we, we think that there are three justifications that are used uh, in society right now. The first one is one that, is, that we would call win-win. <laughs> The idea that uh, doing good things will also help you get more profits. So there is a positive relationship between the two. The second one is the idea of uh, social expectations or license to operate. Uh, society give, gives uh, uh, companies the right to operate and in turn uh, society expects those uh, companies to contribute to society. Or there could be a moral obligation. Uh, in, uh, executives, directors in a company are moral actors and can uh, function as such, want to make choices that are moralistically correct. Those are three uh, good justifications and, and we're not going to criticize them. I would argue that if, if it's true that there are choices that you can make and you can be better off as a company and make more profits, but you can also contribute to society, well, and actually John uh, von Tradona has said that in a blog a few years ago, uh, who would be challenging that, right? That would be great. However, there are also points at some point where perhaps there are trade-offs and you can go um, even uh, increase your profitability further, but then at the same time hurt the planet or hurt society. And then the question becomes, if there's such a tension or trade-off, what should you do? Also, some people might feel a moral obligation because of their upbringing, because of the person who they are, but not everybody might have a feeling of uh, societal expectations or moral obligation. So what we would like to propose is a fourth justification. And it's a justification uh, inspired by the concept of human flourishing that we borrow from virtue ethics. I have to be very careful here because, for example, here, Joan von Tredona has uh, 20, 30, maybe a little bit more even, uh, experience in this field. And my experience is about two, two years. 
But, it's, but again, what I said before, not only I think that this is very interesting, actually when I think about my work in competitive strategy and compare it with the work that we're doing here together today on the purpose of organizations, thinking also about the purpose of people, maybe that's more interesting and even more important. Um, so we, we argue that uh, pursuing things other than profits, when done well, contribute to the flourishing of the individuals that affect the organizations, that is those uh, executives and directors that are in organizations that are creating the organization and creating the purpose, but also that are affected by the organization, employees, customers, society at large. So before, before today, uh, we actually used the word, um, not the word uh, human flourishing, but we used the word good life, which is coming from uh, Aristotle. Uh, but then when I was trying to translate good life uh, 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 in Spanish, uh, la buena vida, la buena vida, la, la vida buena, uh, I wasn't sure, and I heard there's a big difference between the two. So I decided, let's stick with, uh, with human flourishing. <laughs> So, uh, a short comment here is that, uh, that there is uh, uh, the boundary conditions. And, uh, you know, because, because when, I, when I talk you know, to other audiences, like economists, they always say, but Govert, it's impossible to do anything else than, than profit maximization, because if you wouldn't do that, you would go bankrupt within uh, no time. You have to maximize profits. And what we argue is that there is a margin of operation between maximum profits and uh, what we call minimum profits to survive. There is a margin of operations, and that's also confirmed, for example, in economic models. So what is uh, human flourishing? Human flourishing consists, uh, we argue, based on the literature in philosophy, but also on the literature that Maria is going to speak about in psychology, of three elements. The first one is well-being. Well-being including elements such as health, pleasure and safety. The second one is self-actualization, the idea of developing yourself creating an autonomy, independence. And then the third element, and that's the element we want to focus on most, is the element of self-transcendence, caring for others, being in harmony with nature, contributing to a better word, uh, world. And this, of course, as, as, uh, as, as Johan also pointed out earlier, is very much linked with the idea, the motivational the theory uh, of Juan Antonio Perez Lopez. And so in the, in the bottom, we, we say, well, having a certain level of material wealth may be a necessary conditioning, condition for living a good and fulfilling life, it's not a sufficient condition. And we have to think about this third element of transcendental uh, 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 purposes. Now what I want to do next uh, is to, to argue that actually thinking about these elements is in your own best interest. Um, as we all want to live a good life, pursuing purposes that contribute to human flourishing is in your own best interest as a member of, of an organization. Um, especially pursuing transcendental purposes provides meaning and therefore furthers one's good life. And Maria is going to speak more about that. I want to show you a video uh, of a person I admire a lot. That's uh, uh, Mr. Schuinar, Yvonne Schuinar. He's uh, an American uh, executive, the founder of the company Patagonia. How are we doing? Five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, the founder of Patagonia. Uh, it's a five minutes video. No. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and he, um, he is, the company Patagonia is well known as a benefit corporation, as a, a company that is actually thinking a lot about the environment and thinking about social. And so, he's going to speak about the idea that taking care of the environment is a selfish thing to do. That is the, a key element, the thing that we can think about and talk about more later. We're part of nature, and as we destroy nature, we destroy ourselves. It's a selfish thing to want to protect nature. I never intended to be a businessman. We made the world's best climbing equipment out of here. We realized that putting in and taking out of all these pitons was causing damage to the rock. So I made these little soft aluminum chocks that you just put in with your fingers. And I'm a dam buster. We've been working for years to take this dam out. The reservoir behind it is only four feet deep. The water gets real warm, kills a lot of the life in the river. When you take out a dam, that's a real victory. I mean, a concrete victory, so to speak. I get an idea to do something. I like to take the first step. If that feels good, I take another step. To do good, you actually have to do something. So a company to, to think about more and learn about more, Patagonia, 
Um, and so the, the, the idea I want to highlight here is this idea, he calls it selfish. And of course, the idea of selfish is exagger an exaggeration, right? But what we would like to argue is that it is in the best interest of the people working in companies to think about the company not just only making profits, but also how the company can contribute beyond that to society or to the planet. And uh, that is, for us, the, 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 the thing we want to highlight in this paper is that that's a fourth motivation for people to, uh, to pursue. And so, very quickly, uh, I will give you the, the framework, and I'm happy to, of course, send me an email uh, to send you the full paper, and we can talk about it more. But just to finish up, I'll give you the framework that we are trying to develop further. The framework has uh, three elements, and the first one is authenticity, uh, the idea of authentic, a purpose that truly reflects the, uh, what the purpose maker wants, instead of being just a marketing tool or window dressing. And we highlight that because if you are pursuing a purpose that you truly like that's uh, truly helping your own personal purpose in life, if you're doing that, then it will be helpful for you. And if you're pursuing another purpose that you actually don't believe in, it's not going to further your own good life. And secondly, uh, worthwhile, a purpose that contributes to the flourishing uh, of at least some of those affected by the firm, whether they are employees, customers, or other people. And finally, we use the concept of common good. We say that if a purpose is authentic and it's worthwhile for many stakeholders in the organization, then what it is, we call it a common good purpose. So to finish up, the idea here is that um, at the individual level, the individual level, because I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to audiences that are executives, people in organizations that are making decisions, that are choosing between investments, should we do this or should we do that? Should we do, choose uh, investment option A, where we have more, more profits, but perhaps we are hurting the environment and perhaps we are hurting people that are working for us? Or should we do option B, where perhaps we have less, uh, less profits, but we are actually doing better for, for the planet and for society? If there's that trade-off, how do we think about that? In their own best interest, purpose makers should pursue purposes that are common good. And why? Because that, those, uh, those, or, uh, those purposes uh, will then uh, be uh, picked up by the organizational level and then companies will pursue those common good purposes. And the consequence of that is the flourishing. The flourishing ultimately also of the decision maker, but also the flourishing of the stakeholders. So purposes that go beyond the individual purpose maker that are transcendent are more li most likely to become good. Conclusion, we don't, we don't tell firms what firms should be doing. The only thing that we would like to achieve is that you start thinking, thinking about what are the options, what are the trade-offs, where do we need to make decisions? Um, and uh, we call on purpose makers to think about what is a good life, what is a good life for you? What is a good life for your customers, for your employees? What is a meaningful life? And how can you contribute to your own decisions, to your own good life, and to the good life of the people in your organization, your stakeholders? Thank you very much. Thank you.